Run the coverage back, hook back into the middle, and then uh, take it to the inside, and that's just a great route. Garrett and Salisbury played together in junior college back at Palomar, and again, that's a, a big, big advantage for those two people. First and 10, 10 and a half to play third quarter. Salisbury on the bootleg. He's got Santos, but way out of bounds. That's a problem right there. Butch Peltz covering number 29. Osvaldo Santos, a 5'8", 170-pound junior from Rushville, Nebraska. We saw him a couple of years ago in the East-West All-Star game out in Scott's Bluff. Uh, He's got extremely good speed. And watch watch right John right. Chapel here. This is, I tell you, Salisbury got bunged a little here. Watch this hit. No, we won't see it. But again, great shot right there. Puts you right in the action. But I tell you, number 41, John Chapel put a hit on Salisbury that was a dangerous, dangerous hit, and Salisbury came up limping a little bit. Lamont Rainey through traffic again across the 40 down to the 37-yard line. The Wildcats moving in UNK territory. I tell you, Bill, some of the camera work today is putting everybody right into the action. I love it. That's great. I was going to say, I thought that ball may have been intended for us. I think what we're going to do in the future here is going to pass pads out to all the viewers. <laughs> That's great. Love it. They're throwing the ball to us. You're a linebacker, and I'm not any good. I don't know why they would even bother throwing it that way. Third down and three. The ball at the UNK 37. Salisbury has Chamberlain again across the 30. He's got enough for the first down. Swarmed over. By a bunch of blue jerseys, Butch Peltz there to make the tackle, among many. But Chamberlain, I think, has been averaging about eight grabs a game, and I think that's his eighth one. It's his third here in the second half. Again, he runs just a short little hook. And he's wide open again and gets that six-foot-three frame in front of everybody, and he's a wide-open target for Brett Salisbury. First and ten from the 27. They go deep to the end zone. Garrett, touchdown! Jerry Garrett went up over the top of Matt Wibbles and hauled down the pass. Jonas Ginther was also there covering. And Wayne State's offense starts to gear up here in the third quarter. Simply a speed move down the sideline by Jerry Garrett, and he's able to go up like a basketball player and pick it off, and there you see everybody coming too late. Jonas Ginner there trying to make the play, but it was way too late. Simply just the speed of Garrett took him out of the play, and then it was just a perfect toss by Salisbury to the corner of the end zone. That was Jonas Ginther covering Garrett one-on-one. -on -one. Wibbles coming over from the free safety spot to try and help out, but it was too little too late. All the horses starting to pull the wagon right now, Bill. Now Andy Parr in for his third point after attempt. It's good, and Wayne State with a third quarter explosion here in the first few minutes. Now with a 21-3 lead on the Lopers of UNK. 9.28 to play here in the third quarter. And what was a close ball game at halftime is tilting towards Wayne's sideline. I was about to make the point that Wayne State, is, is it's not a ball club, even though you've got all that talent at wide receiver, they don't go deep very often. Usually they're, they'll drive the defensive backs and the linebackers back and then bring Chamberlain underneath. They, they just nitpick you with 10-yard receptions, and then boom, they go deep for the, the big touchdown, 27-yard strike, Salisbury to Garrett for the touchdown. Well, you see Dennis Wagner right there, and he's, uh, he's having a good time finally here this afternoon, but you're right. And you have people like Byron Chamberlain and Jerry Garrett they have the great speed. You throw it underneath and then let those people turn to, turn that catch in a greater yardage, and that's what they've done here today. We haven't seen the deep route very often, if at all. It's always been the short out or that they've been making most of their yardage on that short hook to the inside with uh, Chamberlain or run everybody off and bring him to the inside. Wayne State has not defeated UNK or Kearney State since 1971. We make that point again. Well, it looks like that drought may, in fact, be coming in effect becoming to a close. The last time they won it, 28 zip back in 1971. Right now it's 21-3 here in the third. Getman with the kickoff. And this will be Franzen at the 20, no. Instead it is Jason Gibbs, number 85, with the fair catch at the 23 yard line. Jason Gibbs, the backup tight end. Well, they don't give you much chance to return the football. 
Things have certainly changed at the beginning of this half when Wilson Hookfin returned the opening kickoff 100 yards for a touchdown. And in just over five minutes of play, Wayne State outscoring UNK 14-0 here in the second half. Ken Terry, well, he's got a lot of work ahead of him, he and his Loper teammates. They'll go with two receivers to the near side, Carlock and Uli in the backfield. Terry on the bootleg, the quarterback boot all the way. He's got plenty of room along that far sideline and gets out of bounds at the 35, picks up a first down. The I'll biggest you, play of the day for UNK in terms of rushing. Francisco over there, just a great play, number 25. Terry had some room to go, but Francisco gave it up. He gave his body up. Watch 25 there, right to the right of your screen. Now watch this. He's going to give it up right there. Boom, he gets blocked, and then just knocks him off balance just ever so much, Ken Terry, to get him out of bounds. Sean Francisco again giving up the body. That kid, uh, if he had an MVP on defense, definitely one of the contenders for that award. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. This is Mark Uli, Claire Boroff. They want to go back at, Uli, or back at Wayne State on the ground. Uli with another first down. Sean Francisco finally made the stop. Uli, they'll try and get him untracked here in the second half. Right up the gut here, good blocking up front. There's a good block, that trap block out there, and then Francisco, where have we heard that name? Sean Francisco, Lincoln Southeast, there to make the hit again. You don't think his folks are listening to Tony Bennett about 19 <laughs> years ago, do you? <laughs> First and 10 from the UNK 46 yard line. 846 remaining, Wayne State 21, UNK three. This is Yuley. Just slipped down, he had some room to run off the left side. Francisco and McIntyre, the linebacker there to make the tackle and make sure he went no further. Here you're gonna see McIntyre come up 37 right there. Well, he just kind of nicked him a little bit, but Jason McIntyre, 6'1", 215, transferred to Wayne from Kearney State, and I, I admire his uh, career goal. He wants to work in cardiac rehab, and there are times here on the football field when all of us could use that. <laughs> 15 carries, 35 yards now for Uli. This is Mark again, bouncing off one tackle and gets the first down. Jerome Watts finally made the tackle. Mark Uli's running hard on this drive. Getting that 205 pounds, moving up field, and you're gonna see Sean Francisco come up and bounce off right there. How about Carlock throwing two blocks you in that bet. play? And then a good job by Jerome Watts to come in and knock Uli down. Uli, as you talked about her earlier, Bill, in that first half, just picked up 17 yards, but he's made better progress here this afternoon in the second half. I'll tell you what, it's a crisp day in terms of the weather, and you can hear the crisp hitting along the sidelines. Great audio down there being picked up by our crew. First down and 10 in Wayne State territory at the 42. Uli again off the right side. Another big game. Bernie Mueller, the free safety, makes the stop. Good seal block that time by Todd Peters out of Hastings. He got 280 pounds. Watch 61 right here. Just miss it. Well, right there, he was blocking number 40 for Wayne State, that being John Atkinson. But again, that was a block that sprung Uli up to the outside. Got the yardage, got the first down. One guy, another guy we haven't heard a lot of from today is the flanker back, Sean Ryan. The team's leading receiver, he's lined up in the slot right now along the far side. Sooner or later, they're going to get him involved in the passing attack. Terry again on the bootleg. This time has nowhere to go, just flips it out toward the line of scrimmage. Mike Wilson nearly got the sack, but we may have an intentional grounding call. Doug Martin, the uh, referee, throwing the flag right in that vicinity, and indeed it will be an intentional, I would think. There it is, there's a the signal. Terry's pointing at Randy Carlock, number 44, who had come out of the backfield and was Wilson, down around the 25-yard line. Wilson, the big pressure right here. You're going to see he's going to get that towel and rip it off. And Well, maybe he's throwing to one of the coaches. Maybe they're throwing to us again. <laughs> there was a blue jersey over there, no question. <laughs> it's going to go back, though. That's a big penalty. They've been moving the ball well. It's a loss of down. And a lot of yards. Carlock had come out of the backfield blocking on the play. And he was in the area, but he wasn't standing 10 yards out of bounds. And Doug Martin said, I know I saw him, son, but hey, he's just 
way too far out of the area in which she threw. It'll be second down and 15 now at the Wayne 36. Uly's been the workhorse on this drive. Wayne with a tw Wayne State with a 21-3 lead. Uly, they fake the reverse. They'll take an off left tackle and get back to the 35-yard line, but not much more. We talked about Doug Russell, and you talked about Sean Ryan, and Sean Ryan characterized by Claire Boroff as one of the keys to the success of the team this year. And again, Bill, neither one of those guys have been a factor here this afternoon. And it's only a matter of time, you think, uh, before they have to be a factor and get something moving here as we count down here in the third quarter with 638 and clicking down. Ken Terry with Mark Uly behind him. Three receivers set in the pattern. Third down and long. Look at Watts along the line of scrimmage, ready to blitz. Terry has some time, has to take it out of the pocket himself, across the 30. He needs the 20, he won't get there, but does pick up some valuable yardage. Bill Federson, the outside linebacker, putting pressure on Terry, the quarterback. Terry that time looking for Russell, coming uh, down the left side on a post pattern, but he was well covered. Uh, actually, he had a pillowcase around him. Wilson hooked Finn on the de uh, defensive secondary, doing the job on Russell, and he's really done a job on Russell most of the day. They're very mindful of uh, Doug Russell's abilities. Fourth down and a long five for the Lopers. And they are in field goal range for Mike Rowan. He hit from 45 yards out in the first half. And Rowan is in again. Terry will spot the ball down at the 32-yard line, a 42-yard attempt. And the play clock winds down to zero, but the UNK gets the timeout just in time. That'll save some yardage for Rowan as Terry trots off the field. Again, it's fourth down and five from the 35. Check that the 26-yard line. They change it now. 21-3, Wayne State on top of UNK. Be sure to join us next Tuesday for Big Red Play-By-Play -play as we review the Huskers' tough win over the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Our guest coach will be outside linebacker coach Tony Samuel, the man in charge of the outside linebackers. This was Tom Osborne's 200th victory, and as many of you know, it didn't come easy. That's Big Red Play-By-Play -play this Tuesday live at 7 p.m. right here on Nebraska Public Television. And, of course, we congratulate Coach Osborne. 200 career wins faster than any coach in college football history. Joins Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden as the only two active coaches with that many. That's, that's pretty good company, and I tell you, that's a true Excellent. testament to you bet. to T.O. We hope it's not antelope season or that guy down there on the sideline is in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Fourth down and five, and after the timeout, the Lopers decide they're going to try and go for it. They need some points. Here comes the blitz, the pass off the hands of Wattenpah, incomplete. If he hauls it in, they pick up the first. Blitzing from the outside was 24, Robert McConico, the sophomore from Bradenton, Florida, and that made Terry unload before he wanted to. There you see McConico on the hit, and Federson was also there, but again, it was McConico with all the pressure, and that put the ball just a little bit out of the reach of Wat uh, Wadpa, and that is it for the, uh, for the Lopers on this series, and the ball goes over. I think it's a good call, though, by Claire Boroff to go for do it. it. You're trailing by 18. You're moving the ball finally on the drive. They just come up short. They had the play they wanted. They just couldn't complete the pass. Now Salisbury with first down and 10, completes it to Danny Aguayo. He stretches out across the 35, near the 36, and may have enough for a Wildcat first down. Chris Washington, the linebacker, covering on the play. There's you mentioned Danny Aguayo, Aguayo, that play right there. 5'11", 185. Watch this effort after he catches it out of Washington's hands, and then he struggles to get the first down. At Fresno Junior College, Aguayo set a record as far as receptions go in one game. Nine receptions for 189 yards. Kid knows what to do once he catches it. They have had some terrific talent come out of the junior college ranks, a wide receiver. Jerry Garrett last year. Got a holding year. call out there, Bill. It's going to bring that play back. Go ahead. Jerry Garrett last year, 95 catches, 1,500 yards, a first-team junior college All-American out there in California. I tell you what, it's, Dennis Wagner has brought in some terrific talent from the junior college ranks from all over the country. The biggest problem he's had today, though, has been the penalties, and that is uh, sending him back again, loss of another big play. Here we are, high atop Foster Field <laughs> in Kearney, Nebraska. 
Adrian Fiala, Bill Dolman. Our spotter, Greg Slotsky, is doing a terrific job for us. Way to go, Greg. Good to work with you again, partner. All right. We see Greg quite often at the Omaha Royal broadcast up there at Rosenblatt Stadium. So we figured, well, if you're out here, help, come and help us out. And you've certainly done that. And we appreciate all the help we get out here from everybody at the University of Nebraska. Carney, Brent Robinson, the SID, Dick Beechner, the AD. We certainly appreciate it and look forward to coming out here whenever we can. First down and 25 for Salisbury. He'll have five men in the pattern this time. The ball is at the 11. Another short route, the pass complete to Damon Thomas, pelts the linebacker, the first to make contact. And as Thomas struggles for a couple of more. See, and again, what we're looking at is the route where two or three receivers will run the coverage off. You run underneath with a guy like Thomas. See, he's coming across right from the body, bottom of your screen there, and there he makes the catch. And once he indeed makes the catch, then it's time to go, and he can get going. 6'3", 210 pounds, built like a reindeer, he can run. But again, those short little routes, get it out the receiver, and then away you go. And that's why they've been average, or they've been able to uh, obtain the number one total offense at 610 yards per, per game and passing offense of 404 yards per game. Guys like that. I think Thomas is number two in the nation, and Chamberlain is number three in the nation as far as receiving goes. Second down, 15 from the 23. Another short route, another completion. This time it's Byron Chamberlain out to the 34 and a half yard line. They need the 35 near the 36 again, to get Chris, the first down. Chris Washington over there on the hit, Bill, and again, he's giving him about a three or four yard cushion. Here's a good shot ground level. Look at that blocking up front there. But you see nobody around the, the receiver here. Chris Washington playing pretty soft on the, on the receiver. He needs to maybe plant it a step or two quicker, quicker and then get up there and make the hit. Be right in that vicinity when the ball arrives. Third down and three. Rainey's the tailback. They'll go to the air again. This one batted down at the line of scrimmage. It'll set up fourth down. And that'll bring in the Wildcat punt team. So the UNK defense holds. Dan Fox, the defensive end, got a paw on that. And Salisbury goes to the sideline. Byron Chamberlain in the punt. He punted three times in the first, two times in the first half. Dave Menser came in and punted poorly, so Chamberlain's back. He's holding him. Not a bad kick, but the wind holds it up for Wibbles, and he fair catches the ball at the 40-yard line. So again, UNK with good field position to begin the drive with 4:16 remaining in the third quarter. Wayne State 21, UNK 3. The Lopers moved the ball well on their last drive, but it stalled deep in Wayne State territory. They failed on fourth down. Let's see if they can keep that momentum. They used Mark Uley a lot that last drive, the running back. Mark Uley uh, up the middle, and again, if you can run a little bit of uh, play action up the middle, Bill, and get that established, and then open it up for the likes of Doug Russell and Sean Ryan, that's what Carney will look to do. But again, it's just been tough getting that established and getting Russell uh, and, and Ryan into the, into the uh, pass routes. 21-3, out of the power eye. Yuli on the sweep. Crosses the line of scrimmage, may have picked up three yards. Mike Wilson was over there. Mike Wilson, again, uh, the big defensive tackle to make the play. Number three rated defense in the country, Wayne State. And they've given it a couple of three different looks here this afternoon. They've been bringing people here in the second half quite often. They blitzed a little bit in that first half, but again uh, here in the second half have come quite often with their linebackers. On the quick count, Yuli again. This time a quick hit through the hole. Jason McIntyre and John Atkins in the linebackers team up to make the stop. Watch number 40 here, Atkinson. He's going to close the hole down right there from his right linebacker spot. All state in high school, all state in football and wrestling, state champ at, re at the 189 pound category. Did a little wrestling on that play. Third down and five from the Loper 44. Terry to the air. His receiver, Doug Russell, fell down, got back up, and dropped the pass. He had enough for the first down if they can complete the play. Jerome Watts, the cornerback, covering on the play. 
Lots of pressure again. You saw Russell there 86, but again, a lot of backside pressure. McConaughey, watch on the backside here. Terry can, well, he's simply running out of the, uh, running out of the pocket, trying to get it over to Russell. But Doug Russell not able to hang on to it. Fourth down and five. Casey Anderson in, it, in once again. Anderson averaging nearly 49 yards a punt in the first half alone. Get down there. And he'll get a roll here out of bounds at the 13 yard line. So a nice job by the sophomore from Kearney. One of the top punters in the country. He's showing why. Adrian mentioned he was earning some honors last year at a, at a kicking camp in Boulder, Colorado. He and Mike Rowan both, and we've got another penalty flag on the play. Wayne State now talking with one of the referees. We're going to have a holding call, it looks like, on Wayne State. And that will go against the Wildcats. And that may... Will that give you and Kay a first down? Well, Ken Terry was out there helping Doug Martin referee the game, and uh, it looked like he signaled, hey, the offense is going to have the ball. It'll be a first down. Looks like they're grouping right there. You see uh, Ken Terry, and they're calling an offensive play, so. Well, the holding penalty took place before the change of possession, so UNK will, in fact, have the football. And after the yards are marked off, UNK will have the ball in Wayne State territory, first down and 10 from the Wildcat 46. Finally got that one cleared up, the holding uh, penalty occurring on the snap rather than on the potential return. And that'll create a first down for Carney and uh, a little bit of life here as we wind her down 253 here in the third quarter. Wayne State leads 21-3. Carlock will be the fullback, Yuli the tailback. Ryan's the flanker, Russell the split man to the top of your screen. There's that bootleg again. There's Sean Ryan through his hands, Jerome Watts covering on the play. Well, they're trying to get that flanker involved in the game. Sean Ryan out of Morrill High School, a native of Henry, Nebraska. He's been very valuable in terms of receiving 24 catches on the year. Excellent fake right there, both by the quarterback and by Yuli, the running back, and a plenty of time to make the throw. And Watts is there on the defense. Good defense there, too. And Sean Ryan just unfortunately not able to catch up to the pig, but that was because Watts was there getting the job done. Second down and 10. Back to the ground, this is Sykes, the freshman from Lexington. Knocked out of bounds after a gain of three. Jason McIntyre, the inside linebacker from Erickson, Nebraska, Greeley High School, makes the tackle. Jamie White Eagle that time, we haven't said his name a whole lot. Watch big Jamie White Eagle on the left side right here. He just obliterated a guy at the line of scrimmage and now he's trying to get another hit in there. Jamie, the offensive tackle. 6'5", 335 pounds. The biggest offensive line in UNK history. The starting five averaging over 300 pounds a man. Terry will go to the air. A little underneath pass intended for Doug Russell. And Jerome Watts is there to break up the play. He's had himself quite a series. Again, lots of pressure on Terry, the quarterback, again by the, uh, the Wayne State defense. They had a guy blitzing up the middle. I think perhaps it was number 94, Scott Eisenhower. And then Watts was there on the coverage, and they're just playing tenacious defense. So we're having a flag thrown. Was there a flag thrown by Martin? There indeed was. It'll be third down, or fourth down and eight after the incompletion. And now we've got a penalty flag thrown as UNK was heading to the sidelines. And in all likelihood, that'll be a big 15-yard personal foul unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Something may have been said to one of the referees, which is exactly who you don't want to say anything to. <laughs> yeah, there's a few guys on the, on, the, on the football field you don't want to talk to, and he's one of them. But there was some conversation after the incompletion in between the changing of the punt team and the offensive unit. Well, that sets Casey Anderson back 15 yards, and I tell you what, he had some a chance to knock it out of the uh, in the coffin corner again. Instead, this time he's going to have to get a pretty good leg on it to keep it away from Jerry Garrett. Garrett fields it, retreats back to the eight-yard line. Look out! And he 
tries to find a seam. We've got a penalty flag thrown from clear across the field. A nice return for Garrett. Block thrown by Rupert Williams was a doozy, but we've got a penalty flag that in all likelihood will bring back that return. So blocked by Williams and also by Federson over there uh, to get him to the wall, but there may have been some sort of clip or block from behind on the play. We'll have to wait and see. And it was a clipping penalty. Doug Martin, our referee today. Jerry Garrett, take a look at the punt by Casey Anderson. Watch Garrett now is going to catch it over the back shoulder, turn around and get going the other way. Here's Federson right there on the hit. Wow, what a hit that was. Yeah, it was Rupert Williams, number Good six, throwing a block there. on Doug Brown. I'm not sure where the clip was. Didn't pick it up. Rupert Williams, number six, a cornerback, goes 5'9", 175, leveled, 66, Doug Brown, the deep snapper, who comes in at 6'2", 270. I'll you tell you what, those Wayne State <laughs> DBs aren't afraid to hit, are they? You better make sure you get him in the right place because that could be a little disastrous if not. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 11. Salisbury, wants, they'll throw from anywhere. They don't care where they're at. Buy some time, throws on the run, and the pass is incomplete. I'll tell you what, this offense will do anything. I was watching game films of Wayne UNO. They were running reverses out of their own end zone. I've never seen anybody do that, but they've no, got the receivers that can do it and, and run when they get the ball, <laughs> so why not give it a shot? Dennis Wagner not sure what happened on that play, and he says, oh, well, we'll go try it again. We're up 21-3 right now. We're about to the fourth quarter. Rainey the tailback, two receivers to both sides. Salisbury will work a little option. And he gets it out near the 20 yard line, which is I'll near the first down yardage. Well, I'm not sure what that play was supposed to be. It kind of had the makings of an option, but Salisbury just took it and went. See, he's not even looking at the pitch man right here. He sees that lane created right there, and he just says, hey, I'm going to take it up and go. And I think it was 24, Scott Frangin came in, made the hit. You don't want Salisbury running the ball a whole lot, though. He's got this golden arm that has really brought this team a long ways here the first five games. Pickup of nine yards, third down and one. They go to the air, complete to Byron Chamberlain. He's hit quickly, but he does get the first at the 25. Now that's got to be either his ninth or tenth catch here this afternoon. And he just continues to improve on his nationally ranked stats. Ranking number three in the country, 128 yards per game. First and 10 from the Wayne State 25 yard line. This is Rainey. Had a hard time getting going on that carry. Garrett Estes, the nose guard, the 5'10", 275 pound senior from Cheyenne, Wyoming, makes the stop and we've got one minute exactly remaining in the third quarter of play here at Foster Field. Wayne State 21, Nebraska Kearney 3. 7-3 our score at halftime. Wilson Hookfin took the opening kickoff of the second half, 100 yards for a touchdown. Wayne then later added a 27-yard touchdown pass from Salisbury to Garrett. That's where we stand. Salisbury has heat this time and overthrows everybody, including Damon Thomas, his intended receiver. Butch Pelts, the linebacker, putting pressure on the quarterback. You could see Pelts lining up, uh, intending his blitz before the play got going, and indeed uh, he was coming on the play, put the pressure on Salisbury, created that uh, overthrow over there on the right side. There you see Brett Salisbury. He's Watching, or watching for the play to be signaled in from the bench. It'll be third down and eight. The ball at the Wayne State 27 with 37 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The clock is stopped after the incompletion. And the Wildcats will load it up, trips to the near side and two receivers to the far side. Plenty of time on the play clock. And the quick hit intended for Damon Thomas off his shoulder pads. It'll be fourth down and long. Before the play, each of the slot receivers there raised their hands, uh, some sort of signal between each other. And Damon Thomas over on the right side, he, he came into the middle on the quick pop pass. On the other side, Chamberlain uh, decided to stay out of the middle. So basically communication going on between the receivers and the quarterback uh, all around there. Interesting play. 
34 seconds remaining. In the third quarter, Matt Wibbles back deep to receive the punt from Byron Chamberlain. It'll be Wibbles at the 35. He didn't have a whole lot of help there. He fumbled the football, but they'll say he was down by contact at his own 37-yard line. Looks like Deion Johnson uh, in on part of the hit. There's a little extracurricular afterwards, but a little good-natured talking, and that'll about do it. A couple of snaps remaining here in the third quarter for UNK. And they'll have it first down and 10 at their own 37. They've had good field position here in the second half. They just haven't been able to capitalize. They've gotten one good drive off deep into Wayne State territory. But the intentional grounding penalty put a stop to that. And they were forced to kick it away once again. And that was on the drive after the Wayne State touchdown. Terry to throw again. Nice fake on the linebacker, McIntyre, and Ken Terry. Scrambling out of the pocket, picks up 14 yards and is forced out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Terry looking for Doug Russell on the route, but again, Jerome Watts there on the coverage. No, watch, so he's, he's covered right now. Good job there to fake out the linebacker, McIntyre, but Russell was the intended receiver, but Watts, as he has all afternoon, he, along with Hookfin, have really shut uh, Doug Russell out of the picture here. 14 seconds remaining in the quarter. Terry enough with the, for the first down. It'll be first and 10 from the UNK 48. Again to the air. Again, he has to buy time. Directs traffic. This is Sean Ryan. Pass complete across the 35 to the 33 of Wayne State. Finally, the flanker from Henry, Nebraska. Gets involved in the offense. Bernie Mueller makes the stop. Terry setting up. And again, as we talked about earlier, a little communication between the quarterback and the receiver, Ryan. And again, Ryan, a big catalyst on this offense this year and finally gets into the picture. And for the Lopers, they need to have that happen more as we move now into the fourth quarter. Sean Ryan with his first catch of the day gives UNK a first and 10 at the Wayne State 33-yard line. After three quarters of play, our score, Wayne State 21 and Nebraska Kearney 3 will return with the fourth quarter action right after this on Nebraska Public Television. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is your Nebraska ETV Network, a service of Nebraska Educational Telecommunications. Fashion. It's big business, big talent, and big bucks. From the artist's sketch pad to the Paris runway, go behind the scenes of the glamorous world of high fashion. Supermodels, super designers, and superstars are all trying to get the look. Watch The Look, Monday night at 9 on Nebraska Public Television. Quick start to the fourth quarter, and on the first down play, Mark Uli goes off right tackle and picks up a couple of yards, brought down by John Atkinson, the linebacker from Columbus. Bill Dolman and Adrian Fiala at Foster Field in Kearney, Nebraska, Wayne State with a 21-3 lead, 14 unanswered points in the third quarter to extend a 7-3 halftime lead, and the, the Wildcats trying to improve to 6-0 in the 1993 campaign. Dennis Wagner, I tell you what, if there's ever a Dick Butkus look-alike, I tell you, that guy would be a leading contender for first place honors. UNK coming in one and four on the year. They had high hopes for 93, and they have been disappointed. And there's a fumble on the reverse. Terry's there to some other the football, but it'll be a big loss back to the 41-yard line. Trying to get the ball to Doug Russell again. Uh, there was a, a, a mix-up in the backfield, not a clean exchange. A couple of Wayne State players were back there. There's a flag on the field offsides Wayne. So they'll pick up five yards on the play and do it over. This has happened time and again for this UNK team. They get the ball in Wayne State territory, get a good drive going, 
and then mistakes or penalties or turnovers have cost them. An interception hurt them early on in the first half. The grounding penalty in the third quarter. There is a flag on the play. We didn't see it. It's an offside Offsides. indication against Wayne State. Well, Bill, it's unfortunate so they, they were not able to handle the football because the play was set up. The, the, uh, the route was there. Russell had a shot to pick up good yardage to the right side. But again, the handoff was not made uh, properly, and the, the ball on the ground, Ken Terry recovered it. But again, the, the penalty uh, shut it all down. Second down and four. The Lopers catch a break. Off the quick snap, a quick give to Yuli, the tailback, who dives forward across the 25. The line of scrimmage, they, or the line they need is the 23-yard line, and he looks like he may be about a yard short, so it'll be third down and one. Yuli trying to pick up yardage to the right side. Brian Klaassen underneath the whole pile. He's on the hit. Wayne State, number one in the nation in total offense, 600-plus yards a game, third in the country in total defense. And they come into today's game ranked number 18 in the team poll, 13th a week ago. They have not gotten a lot of respect. This is Julie off left guard with enough yardage for the first down across the 20-yard line. So a nice drive put together by the Lopers here to begin the fourth quarter. Sean Francisco made the stop. Just trying to blast away up front, and that's what they're doing here with Julie. Offensive line creating just a little bit of a crack for Yuli to get through, and the kid can just flat go. And he picks up good yardage, gets that first down, and they're down around the 20-yard line to right at the 20-yard line. They still have a shot in this ballgame, fans, 21 to 3. Still 12 minutes and 50-some seconds counting here. 67 yards rushing for Euling on the afternoon, 50 of those here in the second half. There's a little cross-buck play to the fullback E.J. Hancock. Tackled by Bill Federson, but they get the fullback involved in the play. Hancock, a 5'9", 185-pound junior fullback from Wahoo. Picked up just a yard. Wayne State defense looking for that play. Had it diagnosed pretty well. Looked like Atkinson was in there also on the hit. There you see Hancock. EJ's become more valuable to this Loper team. Mark Montgomery, the... Outstanding fullback from Kozad, the team starter, suffered an injury and will be out. EJ has taken over the starting job there. Terry's pass intended for Russell. He slipped down trying to make the cut inside, covered out there by Jerome Watts. And the ball nearly intercepted. Watts has really done a job today on Jerome, uh, or check that on, the, on Russell, Doug Russell. He's been on him all afternoon. And that's part of the reason, again, that we haven't seen Russell uh, catch the, the number of footballs that he has uh, uh, the rest of the season here, Bill. Again, another third down and long situation. And Boroff with three right receivers in the game. Third down and nine from the Wayne State 19-yard line. Big play here. Terry to the air, to the end zone. Ryan, is he there? Touchdown! Well, we talked about Sean Ryan watch there on the coverage, but this time Ryan wins the ball, the matchup. And Sean Ryan looks like he might have hurt a knee or an ankle on the play. He's holding that left ankle, but Sean Ryan needed to get involved in the offense. He did, and he picks up a touchdown here. Let's just hope that this, uh, this injury isn't that significant. He's able to overcome it and get back at it. Here's the toss, perfect toss, and look at this grab. My word, great grab by Sean Ryan. Take a look at it one more time. That's Jerome Watts, nine on the cover. Ah, oh, that's just a perfect, perfect catch and a nice toss by Ken Terry. Great coverage Nobody. by Jerome Watts. You can't take anything away from the secondary man for the Wildcats, but a terrific reception by Ryan for the TD. Nobody catches that ball but Sean Ryan, the way it was thrown. And we can only hope that that left ankle injury that he's, well, here we go. They're helping him off the field right now. That's not a good sign, but no, Sean Ryan good. is, Helped his ball club here. Picks up the touchdown. Lopers need to just pick up that extra point. And hey, we got ourselves another football game here. Ryan was out of the passing game in the first half. They did a nice job of shutting down the Loper flanker. 24 catches on the year to lead the team. He's got two here in the second half. They finally got him involved. And that a 19-yard touchdown strike from Ken Terry to Sean Ryan, Ryan's third touchdown reception of the season. 
11.59 remaining in the ball game, and the Lopers are a little trying disorganized. To go for, trying to think whether or not they're going to go for two or not. That's the that's the consideration here right now. They've finally got a play call, and to get it underway, they are indeed going to go for two. They're Time out now. they got to hurry. Five seconds left on the play clock. And Ken Terry has to waste a timeout. And, boy, if you ever want to waste a timeout, it's not on a point after on a special team situation like that. But they well, do want to get the right play in there. Sean Ryan, again, uh, beating Watts on the play. We have to say Jerome Watts has really done a fine job in the secondary here today on both of those excellent receivers, Ryan and Russell. The top 10 Nebraska volleyball team rolls into the Big 8 season, and NETV Sports is bringing you one of the most important battles of the year, the Colorado Buffaloes. Join Virginia Stair and me for all the exciting action as Terry Pettit's team sets their sights on the national championship. It's the Huskers and the Buffaloes, Saturday, October 30th, live at 7.30 p.m., only here on Nebraska Public Television. You talk to some folks around the country about volleyball and who follow the teams throughout the country, they say the most talented team in the nation is Nebraska. UCLA ranked number one. They're a very young team. You've got the traditional powers, Stanford and Long Beach State. But many people say the most talented team on all phases of the, of the game is Nebraska. So Terry Pettit certainly has a chance at that first and elusive national championship. Two-point conversion in the air. Terry's pass is intended. Now try and get a number on that, number 83. Ron Goodenberger, Rod Goodenberger, and it falls incomplete. Watts over there on the coverage again, number nine for, for Wayne, and again, he's been a factor all afternoon here. We'll see the touchdown play again here in a moment. Carry on his drop, good, good protection, and then watch this catch. Look at that catch. Great hands by number 33, Sean Ryan, the people in Henry, Nebraska, and the people at Morrill High School, very happy for Sean Ryan. He injured his ankle on the play. And we can only hope that he'll be back out on the field as they work on Sean Ryan right below us here, number 33. Senior elementary education major. Last year, 33 catches to lead the Lopers. This year, now 26 catches to lead the team. They had a big 40-yard reception in last year's 7-2 win over Wayne for Carney last year. Trying to get him in shape right there. That's Sean Ryan. Trainers attending to him. Going to try to tape that ankle up and see if he can go. He got dinged up last week against Fort Hay State, a game down there that UNK dropped. Their fourth consecutive loss. Suffered a concussion. A little bouncing kick that's taken by Jason Williams, number 13. Eludes one tackler, but not another. Number six, Justin Sixel there to make the stop. Carney trying to squib kick it, trying to get something working here, maybe a fumble. People up front don't handle the football well, and maybe they get the, uh, here we'll see it again. There's a squibber trying to get that high bounce, get some people down on the coverage, and almost, uh, almost comes up with that theory, but... Again, Williams is going to take it and go. Or Chapman, that is. First down and 10 for Wayne State at their own 37. Three to the near side, now Chamberlain in motion. This is Jason Williams, the second quarter, or, uh, the second tailback used by Wayne State today. Bob McKissick, the defensive tackle with the stop. Here you see Claire Borov holding class on the sideline. That's right. 18 yard route. Yeah, I got that. Uh, you got that? Uh, you got that? Dig. 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 Right? Believe in scoring twice, right? Yep. H is coming underneath. You got our post cut here. Okay. You all right, Jamie? You got a little tight? Yeah. Okay. Trying to get that offense scored away and uh, put another score up. Meanwhile, the Wayne State offense goes to work. Salisbury to Chamberlain again. John Chappell, the middle linebacker, with the stop. Just simply been running that short hook pattern to Chamberlain all afternoon. There it is again. We've seen it probably 10 times this afternoon. Chamberlain just on that hook pattern. This time he doesn't make any yardage after the catch, but he's done a good job doing that uh, the balance of the afternoon. First down and 10. And Salisbury will work out of the shotgun from his own 48. Trips to the far side. 
And this time he airs it out, going long for Jerry Garrett, just overthrown. Covering deep is Victor Davis, the outstanding cornerback from Santa Ana, California, a junior college transfer from Saddleback Junior College. He's their best cover man, and they have not gone his way very much today at all. Well, there's a reason, because he has great speed, and he's there on the coverage, and we just saw it right there. He has the best speed. He's the fastest player on the ball club, and there he is right there. He's in a good position to make the play. He's not able quite to catch up to it, but he keeps that uh, receiver off the football, and there's a flag on the play. It looks like another penalty is going to go against the Cats from Wayne State. Personal foul penalty against both teams, so that'll be an offsetting, and never mind. I always marvel at those offsetting personal foul penalties. It's one of those things like, why bother? Why not just, hey, give them a talking to, give them a warning or something like that. The personal fouls that nothing comes of it, no big deal. Well, you hit me with a bat, and I hit you with a bat, so it's even. <laughs> They'll do it again, offsetting personal foul penalties. So Salisbury gets to repeat the first down. 21-3, Wayne State on top of UNK. The quick pass to Jerry Garrett, number eight. They went long the last play. This time they come inside, and Garrett tries to make something happen. He gets to the 50, but no more. Todd Price makes the stop. That play covered about, oh, 15, 20 yards, picked up about two. <laughs> Garrett uh, coming to the inside, everybody else releasing off the line of scrimmage. Then Garrett comes back to the inside, picks up, picks off the football, tries to use some of the interference uh, from the releasing receivers downfield to pick up yardage. Didn't work so well that time. Gain of two, second down and eight. 10 10 to play. Another quick pass to Byron Chamberlain. Look at him just run over the DBs. Matt Wibbles, the free safety, finally coming over to drag down the Fort Worth, Texas native. Chamberlain looking around here thinking, hey, I got the first down and he's celebrating right now. And this is just simply a, just a time, or not a timing pattern, but just a quick pop pattern over there. And you get him the ball and you let him run. He's 6'3", 215 pounds, and he can get it going. All they're doing with those guys is just putting the ball in their hands. That's all you got to do. 12, 12 receptions, 162 yards. When you've got guys 6'3", 215 pounds, that's bigger than most tailbacks. He's you just give them the ball, let them do it. He's been averaging just under 129 a game. Eight receptions on the average, and there's <laughs> there's number 13. This may, well, may go, Bill. Yep, slip down. Slip down at the 25-yard line and out of bounds, but he gets another first down. I'll tell you what, I mean, you've got tailbacks at Nebraska who aren't as big as Byron Chamberlain, and that's basically what they're doing with these quick outs. It's just like a sweep almost. It's give them the ball and let them do their work. This is like a hand grenade toss over there by uh, Salisbury, and he just gets it over there somehow to Chamberlain. He's able to pick up excellent yardage after he catches the football. Matt Wibbles there to ensure that he goes out of bounds. Chamberlain got some help from Danny Aguayo on excellent. the block. You bet. Excellent block by Aguayo. Another first down, first and 10 from the UNK 25. And trying to fight his way up the middle is Jason Williams. Todd Price with another tackle. Jason Williams out of Omaha Creighton Prep, three-time state champion and a first-team All-Stater in Class A during his high school career. He originally went to Iowa State, transferred down to Division II into this outstanding offensive scheme that they've got over there at Wayne. Inside, nine minutes to play. Wayne State with an 18-point lead, and they're looking for more. Salisbury, all kinds of time, and now Fox puts some pressure on him. We'll have a penalty flag thrown on the play. Brian Thompson, the offensive left tackle, trying to keep Dan Fox out of the play. And it was right in the area of the official Doug Martin, and he saw it all the way, and that will indeed be a holding penalty on Thompson. That time, that time on the coverage, uh, Carney in good shape all the way around. Even that short man that they've been, uh, Chamberlain, they've been throwing to all afternoon. They had him covered up very well. And again, it was good pressure, as you mentioned, by Fox. But we're going to have a holding penalty. It's stepped off by one of the referees. As Doug Martin now will give us a signal. That's been the problem for Wayne State today. It's been the penalties and the mental mistakes. Sometimes a head coach's job is pretty lonely as Claire Boroff walking up the sidelines, surrounded by people, but looking so alone. 
It's amazing with this offense, second down and 24, as you would say it's second down and long, but with these guys, the skill level positions that they have, the skill level players that they have, that's not all that long. This time airing it out, Garrett goes up over the top, touchdown! Doesn't get any better than that one. <laughs> Jerry Garrett, number eight, at 5'11", going over the top of six-foot Scott Franzen for the touchdown. We talked about the connection between Salisbury and Garrett as we look at it again here. Excellent protection. Look at that protection up front. Incredible. And then Salisbury airs it out, and now Garrett goes up. He's about 5'11", but he went up to about 6'7", right there. And like I said, it just doesn't get any better than that. Garrett didn't start today's game because, well, of a little disciplinary action. He paid his price and now is paying back on the UNK secondary. We wait for the point. Jerry Garrett last year led the nation as far as junior college receivers go with a 1,501 yards, 95 receptions. So he he's no stranger to this activity. And on the PAT, we've got another penalty for a delay of game. I said it was an 18-point lead earlier. UNK had cut that lead down to 21 to 9. And then Wayne State has answered back on the ensuing drive with a touchdown pass from Brett Salisbury to his favorite target in junior college, Jerry Garrett. Well, they marked off five delay a game, and we're going to see the attempt now by Andy Parr. McGuire with the hold. And the kick sneaks through there. 28 to 9, 842 remaining in this one. And Wayne State, after giving up the touchdown, answers back with one of their own to keep the antelopes at arm's length away. Trying to end a 21 game unbeaten streak for the Lopers. 842 remaining in this one, 28 to 9 our score. Brett. Has to be a little chilly up there, I would say, huh, guys? <laughs> Brett Getman will kick things off for Wayne State. 38 degrees, the temperature at kickoff today. Last night here in Kearney, the wind chill, just a real pleasant 10 degrees with a freezing drizzle coming down, and you're in the Bahamas. <laughs> How fair, coming, how coming fair is that? How fair coming is that? back, coming back. It was, <laughs> right now it's very unfair, <laughs> I want to tell you. Butch Pelts and 23, Jeff Sykes back deep to receive the kickoff from Getman, who has not gotten a lot of distance on his kickoffs, and this one goes out of bounds. Pelts wisely watches it go out. Well, one thing about it, Carney, uh, again, up to the task today. They, they really played very well. We have 842 and counting here left in this ballgame, Bill. But they're going against a ball club this year that has been averaging 53, a little over 53 points a game. Wayne has put up 28. We still have time left. But Carney still has time left, too, to try to continue to get themselves back in this football game. It's a, a little bit tenuous right now at best, but they can still get it done. It's unfortunate that uh, one of their best receivers one of the keys to success for this ball club, Sean Ryan uh, injured his ankle on that touchdown pass, and I'm not sure if he's been back. He was indeed walking on the sidelines. I'm now informed. Thank you, Greg. But uh, to get him back into the picture would be a big plus for Carney. But again, it doesn't look good for Carney right now. But the, hey, they still they're, they battled today. They've done a great job in battling a very potent and high-powered Wayne State uh, Wildcat football team. 28-9 our score, we'll do it again. Getman has it teed up now at the 30-yard line. Wayne State after this ball game has a week off, then they'll be at Southwest Tate on the 23rd and at Michigan Tech on the 30th. Only one more home game remaining on the Wildcat schedule in 93, and again Getman <laughs> kicks it out of bounds. Getman this time picks up a little grass, throws it out, flicks the tee off, and I think I think the Kearney team now has the option of taking the ball. Now they're going to bring it back. I thought after two, uh, thought the new rule was after two out of bounds, you had the option to take it back uh, 
At the 35. At the 35 yard line, but evidently not. Keep this up, we'll be back to the goal line here. Well, Getman walked off the field, threw his tee off to the track here at Foster Field. That's him out there at the 25 yard line out of bounds for Wayne up. State. <laughs> Getting a little talking to, it looked like Brian Thompson, 68, having a little discussion with his kicker. And we will indeed have a different kicker. Andy Parr has come in to see if he can do any better. Parr has brought his tee out there. Wayne State this afternoon coming in averaging 610 yards in total offense. Today, 430. It's tough to say you've been held 200 yards below your average and you still got 400 plus in the game. Just but tells you how potent they've been uh, in the first five games. I'll tell you what, this offense is as good as advertised. And Parr gets it on the field of play right down the fairway. This is Butch Pelts, the linebacker, with a pretty good little return out to the 40-yard line. So good field position for UNK. I tell you, don't sell those linebackers short. There you <laughs> see Pelts right there, number 29, Alliance Nebraska product. Won three medals in the state uh, track meet when he was in high school. Did a great job last year. There you see the kicker, Andy Parr, getting a real good run at it. Now watch Pelts. 6'2", 215. Bang it up inside there. Picked up pretty good yardage. First down and 10 from the UNK 40. Sykes is the tailback. And Terry wants to go to the air. He'll have to keep it himself now. He's across the 50 and picks up another first down before he's hit out of bounds by 94 Scott Eisenhower. Bill Federson also from his linebacker spot over there to, uh, to make the hit. Here's a shot right at eye level. If you're a defensive lineman, you're looking at it this way. Split out, and here, here comes Terry. Looking for a block here, but no, it's not going to happen, so he's just going to get out of bounds. But he pays a price. Gain of 12 on the play. First down and 10 from the Wayne State 48-yard line. This is Sykes on the sweep. He gets outside, has some good blocking out of bounds at the 40-yard line. That Carney offensive line has done a pretty good job all day. Todd Peters at tackle, Larry Cardenas at guard, Corey Williams the center, Chad Vokun and Jamie White Eagle along the right side. They're big and they have done a nice job of moving back that uh, Wayne State defensive line. Cardenas uh, in particular, I know on a few trap blocks, he's been out uh, to make some excellent hits. We talked about Jamie over there. He's done a good job on the right side. Big Jamie White Eagle, 335 pounds. Gain of nine on the play. I'll let Sykes try and get the first down. Penalty flag on the play, and Sykes has nowhere to go. And another penalty flag is thrown away from the play and away from the previous one. Mike Wilson made the tackle. Bill Federson and Corey Williams getting a little physical away from the ball. That was kind of David and Goliath matchup. White Eagle, uh, 335 pounds, and Sean Francisco. He came up uh, to make a hit. He's about 180. What is that about? <laughs> 150 <laughs> a lot. pound advantage. Wow. This is a, this watch is Whitey a... go right here. There's 77. Now watch him. There's Francisco. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it was just kind of a glancing blow. This is a big sequence right here. A holding penalty against the Lopers and a dead ball personal foul penalty will so set him back even more. They lose it down, I believe, too. Now they've marked off the holding penalty from the spot of the foul, and now they'll mark off the personal foul penalty. Well, that's, again, Bill, as you mentioned, very, very unfortunate. They had it moving uh, into Wayne State territory, and now it's going to be clear back to the 35-yard line. Instead of second down and one, they'll have second down and a whole, whole bunch. The ball spotted at their own 35-yard line. They need the Wayne State 37 for the first. Second and 27. Sykes lined up as the tailback. And Sykes will get the carry on the draw. A big gain. Oh, is he hit down by Jason McIntyre? 
little helicopter by that guy right there. Sykes tried to take it up the middle, and uh, McIntyre there to watch this hit now. It's a draw play. Pretty open. Now watch this. Boom. Two-point landing. Helmet and elbow. Third down and still long. 18 yards to go. Again, they need the, the Wayne State 37-yard line. Inside seven and a half to play in this one. Terry airs it out. Contact downfield and no flag on the play. The pass intended for 81, Todd McCoy, Bernie Mueller, back covering on, a pl on the play, the free safety. Little bump and run back there by the defense. And again, everybody looking for the flag. I'm not so sure it should have been thrown, but it was not thrown. And go back and try it again here, fourth down. Carney going to kick it away. Casey Anderson has trotted onto the, onto the field. As has Jerry Garrett, number eight. And another nice kick by Anderson. And this one will take a Carney roll. And can they get to it before the end zone? They do. I'll tell you what, this Carney special teams unit has done a nice job, save for the kickoff return to open the third quarter. But in particular, he punts, and you got to be impressed with Casey Anderson. Well, John Drew and uh, Justin Sixel were down there. Not sure who exactly got the hand on the football to start with. I thought it was Drew, but. I think Drew batted it out of the end zone. I yeah. think Sixel oh, downed yeah. it. He, he batted it before it got to the end zone, and, and uh, Sixel was there to make the play. But again, nice, uh, nice teamwork on that, that punt team. The executive producer of NETV Sports is Steve Almas. Today's game has been produced and directed by Jim Carmichael. Our unit director is Martha Florence, and our remote engineer in charge is Dan Wright. 7.09 to play in this one, Wayne State 28, UNK 9. And after a whole lot of discussion as to where to spot the football, I would imagine. Well, let's see what old Doug's going to say here. Was there a flag down? I did not see a flag anywhere. There's a holding on Wayne, apparently. I didn't see the flag I, either. I didn't see a flag. My eyes were going here. So after the penalty, well, in any, in any event, Wayne State is going to have the ball deep in their own territory with a 19-point lead. Well, they've still got some discussions going on down there. I've been reminded, and I, and I thank these guys for reminding me in the truck, Today, October 9th, now we've got a lot of people who watch us here on ETV, but nobody has been more a loyal viewer over the last five years than my mother. <laughs> and today is my mom's birthday, and, and so I, in lieu of buying a birthday card, Mom, happy birthday. I love you. Thanks for watching, and, and I hope that you're having a great day. I hope you're enjoying the ball game, and I hope everybody out there is, is enjoying today's contest. This has been a fun one. That goes for all of us, Mom Dolman. <laughs> great to have you with us, as always. No, no, I, okay, I did, I, now, they're, now they're giving me some grief. I did buy my mother a car, all right? <laughs> but I think I could get away with it, though. <laughs> well, after the penalty, they still marked the ball at the one-yard line. So first down and 10 for Salisbury, with Jason Williams lined up as the tailback in the end zone. And they go long. The pass intended for Damon Thomas. There's a penalty flag on the play. I think one of the DBs over there might have hooked Thomas on the route. We'll have to wait and see what the indication is, but it looked to me as if uh, Thomas got hooked by one of the defensive backs. Well, it's as good as a completion. A lot of conference going on one more time as you see some of the conferees over there, Chris Washington. He's number nine. Number 69 is Dan Fox. A decision has been made, and the winner is. Yep. Doug, Doug Martin's got a lot of good air time today. <laughs> Maybe too much, so more than you'd like to see from a referee, but they have done a good job this afternoon. The interference penalty against UNK will be a 15-yard penalty. 
Some other folks to thank this afternoon. Rich Broderson, our statistician, done a good job for us. Also want to thank Brent Robinson again, the SID here at UNK, and Dean Watson, the Sports Information Director at Wayne State College. Those guys supply us with all the, the information that helps us out so much. Well, they really did this time, too, Bill. I want to tip my hat also, if I may. Uh, both of those gentlemen, excellent job for us. Certainly do appreciate it. I'll tell you what, Dean, better get used to working hard because there are going to be a lot of people who are going to be interested in this Wayne State bunch because this is a very good football team. They didn't get a lot of respect in the ratings this last week, dropping 13th and 18th. These guys are for real. They've got too much talent at the skilled positions to not be among the nation's best teams in Division Two. And they've got the defense to go with it, too, Bill. Uh, that number three rated defense, uh, giving up nine points points today but again they've done a great job uh, on the afternoon through the year defensively giving up 192 uh, 192 yards total defense through the first five games I'm not sure where they're at right now I think they had uh, given up about a total of 78 yards through the first half 635 and counting remaining in this one Wayne State 28 UNK 9 second down and 10 after the Williams carry and Salisbury will go to the air. Another quick pass, this time too tall for the intended receiver, Jerry Garrett, who's got himself a couple of touchdown catches today. For those of you who are tuning in to the joy of painting at this time here on ETV, stay tuned. That show will be, will be joining that show immediately following the conclusion of today's game between Wayne State and UNK. So stick around and watch the end of this one, six minutes plus to go on this one. Again, just the old short route, and that's what uh, Wayne State has capitalized on today, just simply the short pattern, the little short hook pattern, the little short out pattern, not going to the long pattern all that much. There it is again. And another penalty flag on the play, which would be in the area of holding. That's Byron Chamberlain with another completion. Chris Washington, the linebacker, on the coverage. Yeah, those short passes are very, very dangerous in this offense. And watching some of the other things, other games that Wayne has had this year, or Wayne State has had, and, and looking at their statistics, they've got a 90-yard touchdown reception. It comes on a slant pass. They've got a 60-yard touchdown. That's just a, an, a, the ability for those receivers to haul the ball in and then use their talents to make the big play out of a, out of a short pass. Well, the play is going to be marked off. I believe it was indeed holding, but you're right, Bill. It's uh, what we talked about uh, most of the afternoon when you can get the ball in the hands of people like Byron Chamberlain. It was a face mask, I, I'm told. But get the ball in the hands of people like Chamberlain. Just let them run with it. Just throw that short route and get it done. Third down and a whole lot more than the nine on the scoreboard. And Salisbury airs this one out down the middle of the field. Intended for Byron Chamberlain, and he takes a shot. <laughs> Chad Misek was the one back closest to the ball. Wibbles gave him the shot. The watch 18 on the route here. There you see Chamberlain going through the middle. Now watch 18. Bingo right there. Hello, Mr. Chamberlain. Don't come into my territory or else you hear the bells. You see the left hand of Brett Salisbury. He has a broken bone in his left wrist that he suffered in uh, the, the big win over Mayville, North Dakota. You may have read that in the papers. 91 to 12, the score on that one. Talking to the Wayne State people, they said it could have been a whole lot more than that. They had to, they did all they could to keep the score down. They broke his hand to cut it scoring down. Huh? <laughs> Chamberlain in the punt, and that one's nearly blocked by Misek. He had a tough time on the snap. This is Wibbles all by himself, right back up the gut to the 30. UNK with a chance to put some points on the board. As quickly as it opened, it closed that quickly, and it looked like number 49 for Wayne State. Bill Federson there on the hit. Watch this pressure here. Good job uh, up inside there by Chad Misek. Now watch this here. It's going to open up quick, and now it's going to close very quick. Boom, right there. Federson on the hit. Oh, 92 was down at the bottom there, too. Brian Clausen. Oh, defensive lineman. Good field position to start this drive. First and 10 from the Wayne State 31 yard line. This is EJ Cancock fighting his way through traffic down to the 21 yard line. Out near another first down. Sean Francisco, the strong safety, makes the stop. Wahoo, Nebraska. Here you're going to see Hancock take it right up the middle. Excellent hole. Look at that. 
Great blocking up front. Pat Quick. Gilbert, 58, with a nice block. Matt Gillen also in there with a great block. A gain of nine. It's second down and less than a yard. Hancock again. This time he has nowhere to go. We talk about Wayne State's defense being ranked number three in the country. Their rush defense giving up just an average of 83 yards a game, two yards per carry. They are very stingy along that front wall. Mike Wilson made the tackle on that last play. Again, right in the action here, just middle of the line mayhem. Federson underneath all of that. And a whole bunch of other white jerseys. Jake Lure now in the game as the left tackle, number 74. Dan Weissman, the left guard. The new quarterback is Sean Murphy, a senior from him at California. And again, nowhere to run. Third down and less than a yard, and I don't think he made it. They need to edge the ball just across the 21-yard line. The 20-yard line would give them the first. Sean Murphy, a 6'1", 205-pound senior out of California, a terrific backup quarterback. Many of the players in this squad feel just as comfortable with him in the game as they do when Ken Terry's in there. He has got a lot of experience. He saw a lot of action a year ago. He can do the job when he gets in there. He has an excellent knowledge of this sloper offense. And Hancock is able to get the nose of the football just far enough for the first down. Got a good spot on the ball, and again, it's a first down. So the Lopers, again, a little life here, 431 and counting. They'd like to get the ball in the end zone one more time. Never know what happens in this game. It's pretty well in hand, as we said, but hey, a lot of strange things can go. Murphy on the year, 21 pass attempts, eight completions for 90 yards. One touchdown and one interception, and they want to let him air it out again. Oh, he's hit down hard and nearly picked off by Francisco. He just about got put right in the ground by Mueller on the play. Bernie Mueller coming from the backside and just simply drilled. He put his hat right between the one and the zero there on Murphy. Murphy had a wide open receiver. I think it was Evans right at about the, uh, oh, the 10-12 yard line, but just not able to get the ball to him. But again, Mueller had tone on the quarterback. He locked, loaded, and fired away. You want to talk about a big guy. Sean Evans, number 92. He's the tight end on the near side. Six feet eight, 325 <laughs> pounds. Tight end. Second down and 10 from the 21. This is Hancock on the sweep. I saw Sean Ryan, or, or uh, Sean Evans, yesterday during the walkthrough and he was dwarfing some of those huge offensive linemen that they got down there. I tell you there are a lot of coke machines out here this afternoon in the offensive and defensive lines. Look at this run right here. Good job McIntyre in there on the hit. But again Hancock just simply shedding people. Trying to head upfield a good tough run. They've had a lot of injuries. Have had the lopers during this year especially along the offensive line including the tight end position. E.J. Hancock, he wants to throw, double pumps. A nice job looking for a second. He's gotten in in the end zone. Oh, and he dropped the ball. The pass intended for number four, Brian Brooks, a halfback from Aurora, Colorado. He and Todd McCoy were all by themselves. They had six. They couldn't complete the play. Hancock looking to throw the football early, but it was all stacked up. Watch here. He'll be going to the right side, trying to give it a different look, but up, oh, everything's. How about a fullback double up. pumping? Yeah. <laughs> and then you're going to see Brooks. He had the touchdown, ladies and gentlemen, but simply dropped it. Oh, unfortunate. Claire Boroff going with a couple of gadgets here in the later goings of this one. Three minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Wayne State. Holding on 28 to 9 over UNK in fourth down and long. And the Lopers will go with the play clock winding down. They call timeout. Tell you, there's a peel back, uh, peel back block on that uh, last play, that halfback pass. Robert McConico got a gadget stuck right in his ear. I'm not sure if he, <laughs> he heard the bells ringing or not on that play, but boy, did he get leveled. Pat Gilbert on the hit. 
You just peel him off, just like uh, taking a stamp right off the old, or a label right off the old uh, paper, right, Greg? <laughs> UNK has called a second time out of the half, and while we have this moment, we want to remind all of you who are tuning into ETV at this time to see the joy of painting. We'll be joining that program immediately following the conclusion of this one, this 1993 homecoming matchup between UNK and Wayne State. 28 to nine is our score. UNK with an early seven nothing lead. Lamont Rainey with a short touchdown run. UNK entered back. Mike Rowan, a 45-yard field goal to make it 7-3. to three. That was our halftime score. Then Wilson Hookfin took the opening kickoff of the second half, 100 yards for a touchdown. And then Brett Salisbury hooked up with Jerry Garrett twice here in the second half. And that's where we stand at 28-9. Fourth down play. After the timeout, the pass to E.J. Hancock is off his fingertips out of bounds. And once again, the Wayne State defense holds. Sean Francisco covering on the play. Wayne State does a great job. UNK starts this drive deep in Wayne State territory at the 30, and they come up empty. They've had their chances today. See it again right here as Murphy sets it up. The ball drifted a little bit on the toss. And again, the ball thrown behind the receiver. No chance at all. Ball will go over. But again, and Wayne State defense has really done a good job here this afternoon. Giving up only nine points uh, to the Lopers from the University of Nebraska, Kearney on the year. Their scoring defense has given up an average of about 13, a little over 13 per game. And a new quarterback in the game for the Wildcats. It's Ray Powers, a freshman from Papillion La Vista High School. Sean Salisbury's day is done. Powers comes in. He hasn't seen a lot of playing time this year, but he is the quarterback of the future for this Wildcat team. He, he's a good one. He played in the shadow during his high school career of Scott Frost. He was a Class A All-State quarterback. Frost, of course, the Super State quarterback. But Powers led Papillion to the state finals several years. Here he is on the, on the bootleg. He'll keep it himself and get it out to the 30-yard line and pick up a first down. Saw Powers play a number of times last year. Good size, 6'1", 180. Has a great arm. You talked about, Bill, great potential. And when Salisbury moves on, Ray Powers will step in. Assuming he continues along with his development and, uh, and do a job. This kid's got great potential, great talent. Sean Salisbury, his day is done. The senior from San Diego. It's an interesting story. Played at BYU, Palomar Junior College. The Hall of Fame Bowl MVP for the University of Oregon. Came to Wayne to complete his college career. Salisbury staked out at the end of his career and came to Wayne. And now he has given way to Ray Powers. Also chosen as the California Player of the Year, which is quite an accomplishment when you think about all the talented athletes they have out there. Penalty on the last play, second down and 20. From the Wayne State nine yard line. This is Jason Williams going off left tackle for a big game. Back to near the original line of scrimmage. Mentioned it is homecoming here at Kearney. Want to congratulate Lara Scott and Eric Caldiron. They're the king and queen, Laura. She is a senior from Lincoln, an elementary education major. And Eric the King is a chemistry major, a junior from Columbus, Nebraska. So congratulations to that pair. Coming up on the two-minute mark, left to go on this one as the band warms up here at UNK. Third down and nine. Powers to the air, penalty flag on the play, overthrowing Kevin Brown. Next week, Wayne State. They've got the week off. Final home game of the year for the Wildcats is November 6th against Peru State. For UNK, next week they've got Portland State here at home. Then they play Northern State of South Dakota and then Central Oklahoma. Today's game is the first of four straight home games for the Lopers. Then they conclude the season November 13th against Bemidji State at the Metrodome Classic. There you see head coach Dennis Wagner going to take his team to 6-0 now. 
is looking to improve that national ranking, as we told you a couple of times here this afternoon. They fell in the rankings after winning big time last week. They fell five places, as a matter of fact. Everybody with Wayne State very disappointed with respect to that, trying to climb back up. They're now ranked 18th. They were at 13. They talked about having something to prove coming into this ball game. And UNK is certainly a lot better than a Mayville of North Dakota and some of the teams that they played this year. And I think they've proven it quite a bit this afternoon. Jason Williams forced out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Victor Davis making the tackle. Coming up on a minute and a half remaining in this one. Again, the joy of painting will follow this ball game. Well, Carney, even though they're going to lose this football game, Bill, uh, they should be relatively proud of what they've done here this afternoon. They really were in this ball game up until the later stages here, and they played excellent on defense in that first half, limiting it a team that had been scoring 31 points uh, in the first half to just what they have that uh, nine point uh, factor, or seven point factor, that is. So. They battle this afternoon. You have to tip your hat to them. Fourth down and 15, and the Wildcats a little unorganized on the punt. And they're forced to call a timeout. <laughs> 28 to 9, our score here. Bill Dolman and Adrian Fiala from Foster Field here in Kearney. Again, a reminder, we'll have Nebraska Volleyball coming up on October 30th. The Cornhuskers taking on the Colorado Buffaloes, the big rivalry in the Big 8 Conference. Colorado, a vastly improved program under Brad Sandin. The Cornhuskers, of course, they have owned the court in volleyball in the Big 8 over the last 16, 17 years. That'll be a big one. We'll also have a volleyball matchup on November 23rd. Nebraska taking on the University of Illinois. Sandwiched in between, we'll have State High School Volleyball action. The state championships coming up on November 13th. Things are a little bit more organized coming out of the timeout. Fourth down and 14, Byron Chamberlain is in to kick the ball away. Matt Wibbles back deep to receive. Chamberlain will face a 10-man front. Hunting from his own end zone. He gets it away and Chamberlain is decked and the flag comes out. This is Wibbles, this will be all for nine. Meanwhile, Byron Chamberlain, well, that takes place at the 43. Chamberlain stands back, points at the flag, and says, hey, we're going to do this again. <laughs> Doug Williams with a lot of airtime today. This hasn't been, it's been well played, but we've still seen a lot of penalties. <laughs> well, he, uh, he's probably going to want to tape of this game as we see <laughs> Wagner. We didn't see it on, on screen, but Dennis Wagner across the way just got the dousing. Not sure what it was, if it was... There it is right there. He 21 just got the years, dousing. 21 years of frustration. Wayne State comes to an end. They have not beaten Nebraska Kearney since 1971. And here in 1993, with less than a minute <laughs> remaining and a 28-9 lead, that streak has come to an end. Claire need, Boroff, it's his first loss ever to a Wayne State ball club. You need two barrels for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is a large individual, let me tell you. Receiving congratulations from a lot of folks. Wayne State will improve to 6-0 in 1993. UNK will drop to 1-5. They won their season opener. A win on the road over number 21, Augustana. Things look bright for the Lobers, but they just have not been able to get everything clicking for a full 60 minutes on each and every Saturday. 52 seconds remaining. The penalty, by the way, was declined. And UNK with the football, first down and 10 at the Wayne 42-yard line, and they fumbled the snap. 40 seconds and ticking. There you see Wagner, part of his staff, also uh, feeling real good right now. 21-year burden off uh, the shoulders, Wayne State. Chad Reuter, number 12, a quarterback from Thurston, Nebraska, airing it out. Ryan Z Zabawa trying to run in underneath it. Jerome Watts back there covering on the play. There's contact at the five, and the penalty flags fly. 
it's interference, it'll be a 15-yard penalty. No question, no question about it. Uh, they were bumping the receiver around pretty good over there. Come back to march off 15, be an automatic first down. Is Doug Martin getting a talent fee for this one? He's been on, on the air more than we have. Like I said, he's going to want a tape, that's for sure. <laughs> Get the machine ready, guys. Fifteen seconds remaining in this one. UNK will have a couple of more cracks at the end zone. They trail it 28 to 9. The Lopers with a lot of second and third unit players in their offensive unit still facing some first, well, mainly first team players for the Wildcats. They do not want to give up any more points. This is E.J. Hancock holding on to the football and he smothered at the 30 yard line. And that for all intents and purposes will do it. Wayne State in 21 years of frustration. They go to 6-0 in 93. UNK drops to 1-5. They're celebrating in Northeast Nebraska and a big win for Dennis Wagner and his Wildcat program. Again, thanks to Brent Robinson and Dean Watson, the SIDs at the respective schools, and athletic directors Pete Chapman and Dick Beechner. Once again, our final score is Wayne State 28 and UNK 9. For Adrian Fiala and the entire NETV sports production team, I'm Bill Dolman. Goodbye from Foster Field in Kearney, Nebraska, and happy birthday, Mom. It's Billy Joel with a personal look at how he makes the music that moves us all along his river of dreams. You don't question your beliefs when you're young. And as I get older, shades of gray tend to creep in. Billy Joel.